Hello and welcome to Bergen Stages, our entertainment magazine here at Bergen Community College. Today, as we've been doing recently, we're taking the spotlight off of ourselves here at Bergen Community College and turning it on to our neighbors here in Bergen County. And I'm pleased to uh, uh, invite to our stage today uh, two guests from the Old Library Theater. We have Peg Pete and Craig Teedy. Welcome, guys. Welcome Thank to you our show. Much for having us. Oh, thanks for being here. Uh, I've had the privilege of seeing shows that you've done, and you've done some wonderful things uh, right here in the yeah. Fairlawn area there. Uh, but before we get into talking more specific about the shows, let's talk a little bit about the company that you have here. Old Library Theater Company is celebrating a special anniversary. Pat. Yes, we are coming up on our 45th anniversary. The, the company was started in approximately 1968. I, I always get confused about whether it's 45 years, 46 years. That's good. We're at the beginning of the 45th year. Uh -huh. uh, the reason we are Old Library Theater is because we originally started in the old library that was in the town of Fairlawn. Uh, which is a town I grew up in, mm -hmm. um, and they turned it into a theater and an art studio, and then there was a meeting room in the back as well. It was a small black box theater uh, that all of us really dearly loved. It was our own space, and it was comfortable to be there. Still a community theater. It was still it was, a community It was a community theater, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. um, we did work with the art people sometimes to help us on sets. Oh, nice. Um, and we did... I personally think, very good productions uh -huh. for the tiny little space we had. We recreated pretty much the entire set of Sunday in the Park with George at one time, including mm -hmm. the raising screen mm -hmm. that happened. Mm -hmm. um, we did Sweeney Todd, complete with the trap door that went down. In the and small theater? In the small, the tiny little theater with That's little to no space above. Uh -huh. Um, but they were able to do excellent productions. Um, and so you've been with them since the, the, uh, close to the beginning, is that? No, uh -huh. actually I was not. I, I started with, I saw my first production there in 1990. Mm, okay. um, and then my, I, I joined the group in that year and then became a member of the board in 1991. I gotcha, gotcha. So I've been around gotcha. for uh -huh. three, four hundred years now at least. <laughs> <laughs> and Craig, have, uh, who founded this theater company? Who, was it the town of Fairlawn that got together? To well, do that this? I don't actually yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't it know was actually, mm -hmm. a, I believe, and for, because I was not there at the beginning, it was a group of people who were interested in theater um, and it was formed under the recreation department. So I believe at that point it was an extension of the <laughs> recreation department, oh, okay, which sure. we are still under their auspices. Uh, of the town of Fairlawn? Of the town, oh, uh, nice. the recreation department of the town of uh -huh. Fairlawn. Is the library still there, the old library that it was in? Is that still in existence? <laughs> the building is more or less there. Okay, uh, sure. Right now it's a crepe restaurant with apartments <laughs> above. So um, the ghosts of the many theater past performances, I'm sure, are or hanging around, around there in the crepe somewhere. But it's nice to go have a crepe and then come to, 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 to see. Right. So where are you located now? Well, now we're the resident theater company at the Fairlawn Recreation Center. So we are housed in a beautiful state-of-the-art facility that has 170 seats. Um, we have three main stage productions a year in that space and have been fortunate enough to be able to do two to three special events as well in oh, that wow. space. Mm. So we continue to have that tie with the community of Fairlawn. And how did you get involved with these? Well, I am a New Jersey transplant. Okay. I came here in 2008 for work uh -huh. and have been involved in theater, I think, since I was about three years old, to hear my mom tell it. <laughs> so I was always looking for places to audition. And I came across their audition listing for the production of Rent that they were doing, which was going to be the Northern New Jersey premiere. And mm -hmm. I auditioned because when I saw Rent, it was a life-changing experience for me. And as a performer who wouldn't want to take on a role or roles like the ones that are in that piece. And mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to be cast in the role of Roger in that production, and I've been doing things with him ever since. And it was an amazing production. It was That's great. the one that I yes. saw, and just yes. totally, totally amazing production. Excellent. So Thanks. you're a transplant <coughs> actor to this area. You, I am, you came yes. from? Mm -hmm. Most recently, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, I'm originally from Warsaw, New York. I've lived in New York most of my life. Uh, I've gone to New Hampshire and to Pennsylvania for different school or work opportunities mm -hmm. at times, but have been involved in theater throughout. Great. And you live in the city or you live out in Actually in, in live in Jersey, Jersey City. Oh, okay, okay. okay. great, great, great. Mm -hmm. Cool, great, great. And th what a wonderful theater you've got. And you do do some, uh, uh, how can I say, your season tends to be not the mainstream Rodgers and Hammerstein season, <laughs> which sure. is great. So how do you yeah. pick your season that you have there? Uh, at, prior to this year, the board picked the seasons because we didn't have anyone who actually wanted to be on a, a place election committee. Mm -hmm. So this year what we did was put out um, information that we were looking for directors and if they were interested in directing for 2013, 
if they would send us three shows that they were interested in doing, uh, the way they plan to get this show up and running, um, their ideas of how they would how they would direct it, um, and then that went to a committee of four, I believe, yeah. no five, I believe it was five people. Uh, they looked through all of the submissions and based on both the director and the submission, and uh, I think there was one person who did have a time frame that they had to fill. Um, what would fit into our season, and that's how we picked this upcoming season. Oh, so, so these directors can come from anywhere, or do they already work already with the company and 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 submit from the company? How how do well, you? Some of the do... people who submitted are current members mm -hmm. or have worked in a cap some capacity, mm -hmm. either backstage or on stage with us before, and then some are obviously just local folks who maybe like you did, saw one of our productions and thought that it was terrific and wanted to be involved I want to come because directing. they've done this sort of thing. Before. Because not only did you start as an actor in, in Rent, then right. you went on to direct. I did. I've actually had the opportunity to direct three different things mm -hmm. for them. Um, we had a concert last summer yes. that involved many of uh, OLT's performers, past and present, who got together and in one day put together a two-hour concert of Broadway show tunes from the old days mm -hmm. and current days, which was terrific. Which he also Great. wrote. Which gives a lot of people an opportunity to showcase their talent as yeah. well. Yes. So that's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was nice to bring people who had performed at the old space and in the old theater hmm. all the way back from the beginning and right up to people who had just performed in I the, see, the I see, yeah. last production we did oh, before sweet. the concert. That's so nice. it was it was that's a nice blend of And people. this was a benefit for the theater or was it part of your season? Was it was it it was more a way to raise a, money for the, was, for the theater yes, company? Yes, it was a way to raise mm -hmm. money for mm -hmm. the company. Great. And as I get into that, how do you get funding? How do, how do we support? Where do we send the check? <laughs> <laughs> you can send that directly to. Um, what we have done is, w in the past, uh, I don't think it's been done for the last two years, but we, when we send out our membership forms at the, be the end of a year for the following year, we have sometimes included a letter asking for a separate donation if you can give more than your membership funds. So let me start there with the, with the, with the membership. What mm -hmm. is, uh, the membership is like a subscription to the shows or just membership into the company? Um, what, does, what do I get if I uh, fill out a membership? It's a membership into the group and what you get if you join as a single person member or as a couple, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, you, as a single joiner, you are able to get a ticket for each of the production, the main productions during the year. For the three that you said? The, the three, 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 correct. Uh -huh. um, your uh, vote on um, the board for the following year. You can attend the general meetings. Uh, we're trying to add a little more for the members to do. They can sit on committees now, which had been in the past, but then we didn't have enough members. Um, so we weren't doing it, but now we're going back to forming committees for play selection for oh, um, for hospitality, for all the different things that we need that go into a show, uh -huh. uh, so to get the members more involved. Right. Well, this is amazing. What they, I mean, just getting tickets to the shows is, I will is say, great yeah, already. So that's it's nice. The membership is a then, pretty great deal. Yeah, it sounds you're like you're paying twenty-five dollars as a single person correct. for a member, or forty dollars for a couple, and you get those three tickets. Which that's right. just unheard exactly. of in this in this economy. So that's a great deal that you have, and now you want to get them more involved. Absolutely. And do the members tend to Craig get get to involve backstage and help build sets? Yeah, and obviously. Yeah. We, yeah, we, there's a lot to do, as you know, yeah. especially mm -hmm. for main stage shows, which for us tend to be musicals. So mm -hmm. we have band members, um, we have stage crew, lighting, sound, all sorts of folks who come from all walks of life here in Bergen County. To publicity. Don't you handle a lot of the publicity? I do that now, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a website. We also have a number of contacts in terms of local media, but we just started this past year to more actively use Facebook in the new world mm -hmm. of social media. That's it a is, great way to meet, really re yeah, meet yeah, and yeah. reach everyone. Mm -hmm. So we're doing quite well that Yeah, way. I think I've seen uh, when a show comes up, uh, somebody uh -huh. put up a, a new Facebook for the, for the production. I remember yes. Jekyll and Hyde had its own, uh, which is great. I mean, yeah. it truly is. This is the way of the world, and we it's, it's running to catch up with it, I find, sometimes. A little bit, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's good, and especially when you have a, a, the, that younger generation that can help with it, then it's like, great, great, you do that sort of thing. So what can we do to help you get more members? What what um, What... Can we do to help reach out for this membership? Are you, well, I think are you, just being able to get the word out about who we are and what we do and where we're right. located is terrific. Mm -hmm. I, I think as people have the experience of being involved in one of our productions or seeing one of our productions, as I indicated before, they tend to want to come back. Mm -hmm. It's a really great environment. There are unparalleled opportunities for people, like I said, to be able to direct four times now mm -hmm. upcoming is mm -hmm. really great for mm -hmm. me. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity for the creative culture that tends to flock toward metropolitan areas like ours to really get involved in a hands-on way. Mm -hmm. Which is one of these, yeah. Well, and also the, um, our audiences who 
who come and basically join for the free ticket, which is fine. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that as well. Um, they do tend to tell their friends, they bring their friends with them who pay for a ticket or their friends join. Uh, mm -hmm. But they're appreciative that we are putting on quality productions in a local setting right. at an affordable price. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because to go into the city anymore, as you know, is... Just is crossing the bridge or yes. a tunnel. You're just yes. paying a hard enough to get there for when you get right. there. Exactly. Exactly. Three times right. what you would pay exactly. to see <laughs> It's totally... A, um, but, but, but it's great that you've got this sub subscription and this base to work from. Uh, and it's great that they'll participate and, and help build sets, uh, hang lights, and, and all. I think... One of the worst things I hear around here is, gosh, it's such a good secret you've got this theater here. It's like, no, I don't want to be a secret. <laughs> don't, you know. Uh, but I think you're right. Once you get them in, then they know about it, and hopefully they'll tell a friend, and they'll yeah. tell a friend, and all that. And I guess part of this benefit that you did, this, this the concert, mm -hmm. is a way to get some of the old people, it sounds like, back that haven't been participating. That was really nice, because at the beginning of the day, we were there at 8.30 in the morning, um, and we rehearsed the entire day till it was showtime. Mm -hmm. I think we maybe gave them, we were supposed to give them a couple of hours and it ended up being like 20 minutes <laughs> um, because it just needed that much time. Right. Um, what was interesting was when they all came in in the morning, everyone sort of flocked to, to their own group and their own age group. By the end of the day, they, they were all kind of bunched together and they're all, they're friends on Facebook. They speak to each other. They go support each other's shows when they're in other uh, venues and it, it's really nice to see that that's what you want in a community mm -hmm. theater mm -hmm. oh, definitely. that's the community part of theater right right and keeping that that connection with right. them is so so yeah, so and even though we obviously think about a number of things in choosing the pieces that we're going to do in each season inevitably depending upon what we end up upon it may not have the great role that someone who's been phenomenal with us in the past might be looking for. So this was a great opportunity for us mm -hmm. to really involve and engage people who maybe felt in that previous season there wasn't something of great interest to them. Speaking of which, is there something, uh, I know a lot of families like to get involved. Are there, mm -hmm. uh, are there opportunities for young ones to get involved at, at Old Absolutely. Library Theater? <laughs> yeah, um, we try to do one, one family type show. Um, and I, this year I'm not sure what that's going to be, but um, we have been trying actually to get a small group of children to have like perhaps a Saturday, two, three weeks with them. Like a workshop. To a, a workshop to, uh -huh, uh -huh, and then uh -huh. finalize that with a performance for their parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, whatever. Which um, brings in new which people brings new to people know the theater's in. there. Mm -hmm. we, when we did Joseph, uh, the director said, I, I would like to have children involved. Sure. He didn't want a, like 28, he just wanted a small number of children. I think we ended up with four, I think five or six children, um, which was great. Their parents joined, their aunts and uncles joined. The kids were great, they had a wonderful time. People loved them mm -hmm. because kids on stage are really adorable. Totally, yeah, I mean, um, it's Harold Hill. And they were Hill, very, a... <laughs> very well behaved, I must say. Oh, good. Uh, but good. we also ended up with the older sister and the sister's boyfriend, and that's how things just roll into becoming a larger group. That's great. Which gives you more opportunity to present larger things or things that you hadn't thought of before because someone says, well, why don't you do this? Great, great. So we'll get back to that because I want to talk even about casting and how you find this talent, but we're going to take a quick break. Uh, so join us. We'll be right back to talk to these great folks from the Old Library Theater. This is one amazing truffle tree. Can you imagine a place where these grow everywhere? Yes, it's called the forest, a magical place to enjoy with your family. So discover the forest and explore all the wonder that's there. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. True definition of hero and been a hero. Took a heroic effort. Every day we bring to our fans the world of sports. We speak of heroes and heroism, but there are days when sports matter little and heroes matter more. These heroes don't hit walk-off homers or buzzer-beating threes. They simply made a plan for what to do when disaster strikes. You never know when you might need to be the hero, because you never know if today is the day before a natural disaster. Prepare, plan, be a hero. Visit ready.gov. My life is full of statistics. Thing is, I could have dropped out of school and become one myself, but I didn't, because I had people that believed in me. Here's another statistic. 7,000 students drop out every school day. That's one every 26 seconds. 
It's time that students know that we believe in them. Inspire a student and share your message of support at boostup.org. The odds of this daughter of a clergyman spending 11 weeks at number one on the U.S. singles charts? One in 19 million. The odds of going on to win six Grammy Awards? One in 1.4 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 150. I'm Tony Braxton, and I encourage you to learn the signs of autism at AutismSpeaks.org. Hi, and welcome back to Bergen Stages. I'm Jim Bumgarten, your host. And with me today is Peg Pete and Craig Teedy from the Old Library Theater. And we've been kind of chatting about what's going on over there in Fairlawn, New Jersey. I interrupted you before the break just talking about what you've got going with children. Uh, and then during the break, we talked a little bit about Cinderella. So tell me Right. Well, bit. go ahead. Sure. Well, in a prior season to Joseph, we did a production of Cinderella where we actually invited children specifically to come to a special performance and any performances that they came to gave them the opportunity to go on stage at the end mm. and actually meet the cast, yes. get mm -hmm. autographs if they wanted to, take pictures, and that was just a terrific opportunity for them. So we are in the process of trying to develop special children's programs and workshops as Peg was talking about, but we really try to think when we're doing a show that meets a particular group's needs, how can we make sure that they're aware of what we're doing and they're involved. So mm -hmm. even when we did Joseph, for example, we sent out special publicity to all the local churches because we yes. thought their members Perfect. might be particularly Perfect. interested and that yeah. worked out great yeah. for us. Yeah. Nice, nice idea. Right. Well, and it's great because that's your future audience are these young right. people, so you want to get them involved, or actors or, mm -hmm. or technicians, but get them involved in, in, the, in the show in some capacity right. like that, even if it's backstage looking at Cinderella's slippers. Be, that, <laughs> it's got to be just magical for them. them. Somebody's yeah. got to carry them. <laughs> so that's magical. So uh, we're, I, I know now we got you from Pennsylvania via Warsaw coming in, and, and you... <laughs> Were born raised in Fairlawn, or you? I was born in New York, Manhattan, okay. and we moved. My parents moved to Fairlawn when I was two. Mm -hmm. I lived there until I was eighteen, and then we moved to Glen Rock. So, Old Library actually started after I left town. Uh -huh. um, and I, to be honest, I had not heard of Old Library Theater until my son, who did tech work for shows, was involved with a show there, mm -hmm. and he said, "Oh, you should come down and see. This is this cute little theater in Fairlawn." Uh, in the old space at that time, the black box. Um, and I, I went and was enthralled by this wonderful production that they were doing in this tiny little space with folding chairs and risers stacked up. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a very homey feel to the space. And I became involved with the next show that he was involved with mm -hmm. um, and did costumes. I started doing costumes and, and helping with refreshments and working in the box office. and. That point, the couple of the board members said, "Well, you know, you really ought to just run for the board because then you can, <laughs> then we can use all really of your time." Really, we got you the whole time. <laughs> and I kind of jumped in, and I'm still in. <laughs> uh -huh. That's great. And it's, it sounds like a, a, you saw the magic of just doing theater for theaters. You know, yeah, a, 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 it, it, of not. It was just very interesting to watch something go from page to stage and just become this big magical thing. Especially, we used to do a lot of children's shows when we were in the old mm -hmm, space. Mm -hmm. um, and what we would do was set up chairs in the back and put carpeting on the floor for the kids to, to sit, sit on mm -hmm. so they could be close up, just to watch their faces during a production, mm -hmm. or during Cinderella, because I was dressing Cindy, so I was able to kind of peek now and again to see the kids' faces. It's great to watch them mm -hmm. because they're just so open and so pure, and this is just so real for them. It's a total magic moment yeah. for them. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And now what is your role uh, on the board, or do you have another right title? Right at the moment, I am vice president, and that makes me executive producer of each of the, the shows that we do all season long. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so you're, you're the one in charge, kind of. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little busy. <laughs> you're busy there. Uh, <laughs> and I think I read on the website you also had a Lifetime Achievement Award recently. Yeah. What was yeah, that about? about <laughs> you live long enough, Good. someone will give you a Lifetime Achievement Award. I was very honored, I have to say. Um, it's humbling. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have been part of NJ Act. The group is part of NJ Act, which is a, a basically a Tony Award for uh, community theaters in New Jersey. Um, I review for them, and I believe you're now reviewing for them as well. This is okay. for northern New Jersey or for the entire state? It's for the entire state. state. Oh, the entire state. state. The wow. entire state. Um, and once a year, they have an award ceremony where there are, I believe this year there were six shows that were up for production 
uh, awards. And it's actors and costumes and sets and I think makeup is still part. I'm not Everything. positive. Everything that goes into a show <laughs> mm -hmm. is has an award uh -huh. that is received. That's they nice. also so it's the Tony Awards for for, for yes, New essentially. Nice. And they they do a lifetime achievement award and they do a theater of the year award. Um, and then there's the award uh, for the person who named the Perrys. Um, and right, each you're stalling, Peg. Talk okay. about what your <laughs> lifetime achievement was for. Right. How did we get this award? Um, I have been involved with theater since I was two. Um, my mother stuck me into modeling. I was on TV. I was on radio. Uh, and then I went to school. I got married. I was out of theater for a while. My kids got this gene. Whether mm -hmm. it's a good or bad gene, I'm not really <laughs> sure. Uh, so obviously I went to everything they did. Once they were grown up, I said, you know, there's that cute little Fairlawn that I, theater that I belong to. Maybe I should start auditioning again. So I went back to auditioning. A friend of mine started a group called Voices for Life, which was to help to raise money for people with AIDS because mm -hmm. what was happening was they were getting insurance in some points, but not necessarily. Their bills weren't being paid. They couldn't care for their animals. Uh, they needed help with cleaning or whatever. They needed food. That's what our money went to. Mm -hmm. Um, and then once I got involved with that, I, there was a, a, another group of kids who needed a space and needed a mentor. So I kind of asked the board and they put them into wow. our theater mm. and I mentored a group. They were called Prometheus Productions. Um, several of them are now working on Broadway. Hmm. Um, so I'm very proud of oh, my kids who, yeah, who went absolutely. forward and stuck it out. Yeah. Um, and um, then there's a Flow folly. So anyway, all of this combines together. Mm -hmm. And someone wrote a lovely, lovely, lengthy piece about what I've been doing with my life, and they thought that was a good enough reason to give me a lifetime achievement award. I think it's totally award. a great reason. That's that's wonderful. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you yeah, very much. Absolutely. Uh, um, and many more to come, I hope. Yep. Many thank more you. to come. Yeah. <laughs> so now uh, I now know where you the directors choose help choose the material with the board's approval and all that stuff. So where do you get your actors and where do you get your designers and where do these people come? How do they walk into your life? Well, they tend to either be people who worked with us in the past or connected to people who know us, or it's just that magic of having someone walk through the door that you didn't expect right. and didn't even know existed who knocks your socks off. So how will I know about the auditions? Or do you well, we do post the auditions online on, on our website, website and on the Facebook page that we talked about earlier, and then we obviously send a blast out to all the local media to try to publish in newspapers, and we've been seen in TV ads as well, mm -hmm. to try to get the word out as best we can mm -hmm. to folks in the area. And we've had people come and actually audition and be in shows from as far away as Brooklyn. So yes. people will make the trek to come work with us. For the mm -hmm. shows you show. And you mm -hmm. do such, like I said before, such terrific shows. So um, you obviously can assemble a, a great cast of people who, who, who love doing Now, what's the rehearsal period? What kind of time do you... Uh, it's usually about six weeks so um, between auditions right? and yeah. the yeah. performances. And we have performances that run two weekends mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in the space. So it's a pretty compact schedule. We pretty easy to work around people's individual commitments because we understand yeah. that mm -hmm. we're a volunteer organization. Right, right. We're not getting paid to do this, so we really try to utilize people's time wisely. But you get unbelievable talent. Really I mean, do. yourself, because I, I think you, you perform, yeah. so I just know the talent that you're getting. So it's just amazing, uh, the Broadway caliber that you see at old library theaters, uh, and sets, and, and music, and, and all so. that. I think you really we do try. an exceptional job there. Uh, and the musicians, the same way? You just kind of word of mouth and, 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 and publicize? Or well, we do you have, have music directors for each right. of the musical shows so that we have, and they tend to bring those folks in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you have like a resident, is there an artistic director? Is there someone like, who's the, who's the? There is not. Our directors pretty much have been designing their own sets, even if it's just on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig gets in hands on. Um, we do have a couple of people we can count on and call in to say, listen, we need this. We have a lot of materials stored that we can recycle and reuse. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just basically the grunt work. It's not the work that's seen when the audience comes in. But these people are very happy to come in and help us with getting our sets and helping to make the magic. Mm -hmm. Just tell them what you need, and they'll you know, yeah. give them a hammer, and they'll be yeah. out there. We do have a number of members who have no interest in being on stage at yes, any time, we do. Yeah. but who are very creative and very committed to the idea of theater and love it. And we have tons of opportunities for those folks as well. Mm -hmm. That's and but they don't. As a member, you're not required to do anything. No, I, no. I, you know, like some say, well, you got to turn in so right. many hours yeah. running concessions no. and all that. No. Um, seems like you had raffles and things going on too. Did I remember that you had? Uh, did you no. have a kind of rapper? I mean, something was going on in the lobby. I can't remember what was going on when we, I came to see the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> something now, was going on in the now lobby. Now we understand. <laughs> we have um, 
kisses for the cast. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. <laughs> it's kisses in a bag. You can write a note, and uh, they, that's how we raise a little extra money for uh, the productions. Um, people send notes back to cast members, and we have a program there in case they don't want to miss anybody. You can send it back to tech people. You can send it back to someone who's working in the booth. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and those are delivered with the notes. And the cast looks, everyone looks forward to the person coming back with these, with kisses, these kisses in their hand. <laughs> what a clever um, but idea. But it's, it's a way to raise cash. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have a donation jar that mm -hmm. we sit on, on there. There's also information. If you come to a show, there's always information about membership mm -hmm. out. Um, and generally, we try to put a flyer out about the rest of the season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, so let's say that I'm coming to see the show, and I've sent back the kisses, and, and, I, and I've helped you raise some money. Is there something else I can do to help you guys? Um, tell your friends. Tell my yes, friends. Exactly. Thanks. That's, uh, you know, that's a big uh, right. uh, input there, too, to, to be a part of what the theater's going on and tell people to come see it. But you're, uh, when I went, I remember you had pretty much a full house. I mean, so you're, you're uh, at, at times, we, I think we you're... We do pretty well. We're doing which is, well. Uh, have you thought As of, I'm just thinking future, Craig, are you thinking of extending the weeks? I mean, you do two weeks? Sometimes we've been able to, to do three, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, three weekend performances. It is a little tough given that we are the resident theater company of a space that is in high demand. So there are other right. theater companies that use that space either for individual events or because they also have developed relationships with the center. So we tend to just stick to two weekends. And again, in a 170 seat space for six performances, that tends to create really great audiences it for does. our cast. Right. It does, it really does. And, and then of course the bigger cast with the families and all that, then you get right. them all yes. coming in too, which really helps. Um, and that's what's great about community is, is that uh, these actors might be uh, your nurse that, yeah. that do, do at the at, one, at, is. <laughs> <laughs> one is. One really. is. Um, so that's just kind of makes it magical too for people in the audience. Go, I know that person from somewhere else right. and they actually can sing in there and they're brilliant at what they do. So now we're celebrating your 45th year. Mm -hmm. Let's move forward. Where are you seeing the theater going? Have you Thought, are you continuing the space because you're content with it? Are you, is there like a, a, a long-range goal of the theater, of, of space, of adding the season? I know you talked about a, the whole children and, and, and youth, adding a youth program. Have yeah, you? I think we want to continue to be more actively involved in the community, not mm -hmm. just to get the word out about who we are and what we do, but to really bring that magic of theater that we keep harping on so much to, to the younger generation that eventually are going to replace us and take over what we right. do. So. I think it's really important that we continue to do workshops with children, that we have shows that involve them, um, and then also that we get involved in a lot of the things that Peg talked about in terms of her lifetime achievement. There are so many people in need and things that we can do um, that we have the membership resources for that it would be really be great to mm -hmm. encourage yep. our membership. We to haven't, resources. since we've been in the new space, we haven't done it. When we were in the old space, we did once a year, we would pick um, a charity and we would give a certain percentage nice of mm -hmm. our shows from mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. um, times being what they are, we have not been able to offer that yet. Uh, but I would like to see that come back in but in looking the future. At the long range goal. Yes, yeah, yeah. I look, mean, like your, obviously the concert was great uh, that you had right. done with these old members. So things like that can... can uh, yeah, the only thing we actually were able to do is when we did Once Upon a Mattress, which was one of the first things we did in the space, um, what we had was a pajama drive because it was a, a family-friendly show. Mm -hmm. We uh, had a pajama drive for one of the, I believe it was uh, SOS shelters. Uh, and uh, if you came with a pair of pajamas, you got a half-price ticket. Right. Um, so we were able to give some pajamas Great to... Great way to help out yeah. to the community as yeah. well. But as you said, in, in this, I mean, we need to help ourselves too. We have to you know, make sure right. that we're raising money and, and doing what we need to do for the theater company. And then working with other companies, you know, trying to use resources. I mean, I know that we've shared actors here. Yes, we've shared <laughs> and I actors. think that's important. And I think if there becomes the opportunity to share what I have sets or if yeah, I have shots, you know, have and sets. that's, you know, because we don't want to, uh, why, you know, reinvent the wheel if it's been invented just down the right. road here. Right. So I think that's an important uh, uh, commodity to do as well. Peg, Craig, it's just been wonderful to have you here. Best of luck with the next 45 years, you. getting your Life Achievement <laughs> Award coming up there. And uh, we will definitely fill that audience there at Old Library Theater. So Great. thanks for being the guest and thanks for tuning in to Bergen Stages. We'll see you next time.